Huh, I ain't no good at juggling, but we got a Southern Classic right here, fried green tomatoes with a new twist. So stick around, folks. <music> green tomatoes not the movie huh but it was a good flick i remember watching it i think i've done checked it out three times now i think fried green tomatoes has been around forever and ever it's a southern old classic dish but i think it was sitting there folks would be sitting around a mater patch like this looking at them thinking man i wish they'd hurry up and get ripe so they decided they'd cut one of them fry that rascal up and whoo it has been a delicacy ever since now, when you're looking for a fried green tomato, sure, them green, green, green is a gourd ones. Now, they can get pretty tart to me, so I like to get one that's just beginning to get a little color to it and make sure that it's good and firm all the way around. Whew, that's going to make the best fried green tomato. So, let's run on down there to my neighbor's place, old Frank, and prowl through his garden and see what we can find. <laughs> one to have a little color but maybe not quite that much this will ripen as we picked it that's why we picked it but look here on the bottom of this and a channel zoom in it's got some color in it because I don't want them too too tart I want them to be just right come on Shan. <laughs> this is the one I'm sort of after right over here so it's got a little green to it not plum green and tart, but I think we're good to go. Always remember, if you can visit your local garden or your farmer's market, green tomatoes are in season. Me, I'm gonna start with this one right here cause I sort of like him, he's two-toned. Now, slice that bad end right there off, okay? Give that into the rabbits. Now, these need to be cut a quarter of an inch thick so they fry up pretty quick. And you can get quite a few servings out of one mater, you can. So when we got them to this point, folks, get you two paper towels, two cup towels, whatever you got. But we need to lay them maters out because it is a very important step to let them dry a little bit and absorb some of this seasoning we're fixing to put on them. Give them a little pepper. And like I say, maters can be a little tart and I can hear some of you old southern women getting on to me right now for what's fixing to happen next but I like to sprinkle mine with just a pretty good coating of sugar right here on top okay now what's next we're gonna turn them right over and do the same thing except in a backwards order we're gonna put the sugar on first now Get you two more of them paper towels. Put them right back here on top and just let them sit. Now, if the wind's blowing, give them a little weight there and everything will be good. And we're gonna let them set 10 minutes, folks. That is vitally important to get some of that liquid out of them, but also to let that penetrate down in there. Now, while that's doing that, don't think we're just gonna take a nap. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna coat these with. I like to use a cornmeal mix. So. Let's get that put together right quick while them are drying out. Well, you can see me, I done had me a cup of that cornmeal mix, a half a cup of flour, and two tablespoons of Red River Ranch Mesquite seasoning. You can get it off the website, you can. So you ain't got none, you wanna do this today. Get you some coarse ground black pepper, some coarse sea salt, some smoked paprika, and some garlic powder. Mix it all together. Right at the last, I like to give these a coating before I dip them right in that hot oil of something different. Something gonna make it stand out. What is it? Texas toast, cheesy garlic croutons. Yeah, but you gotta mash them. Now you can do this with one of them little magic bullets or food processors or something like that. Get it all in there. But I ain't got one down here till you see an electric plow anywhere. I don't see ones. So we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. What we got here, Shin? It's called a crouton crumbler. Yes, it is. Whew. It's what you call an aerobic exercise. 
Remember, you ain't got one of these, get them. What are they called? CC, crouton crumbler. So you wouldn't think a crouton would have much moisture in it, but they is some there. So with this half a cup of flour that we got remaining, we're going to mix right in there with it. Give it a good stirring around to dry them bread crumbs out a little. Y'all heard me say it. Who wants to holler it out from a distance? Rooster bullet, cackleberry, you got them. One of them. Now when you're in the great outdoors cooking, Mother Nature will clean it up. There'll be an opossum come by. And then we're gonna add us a cup of buttermilk. Which is that much right there. Give it another whisking together to get everybody incorporated well. We have got our assembly line set up. Our maters is sitting there resting like they're supposed to. Buttermilk and an egg. Cornmeal mix and a little seasoning and some flour. Croutons and flour. Put them in some hot grease fried up in a cast iron skillet and the southern classic dish is fixing to come alive. It is. Now there is one more thing I'm going to do. And all you, all you people that are classic southern, forgive me just a little, but this is just the way I like them. And that is just a little general sprinkling of sugar one more time before they go in the buttermilk. Then in the cornmeal mixture, both sides, make sure it's on there good. What? Back in here, make sure you're coated really well. Into the breadcrumb mixture it go. Now this is to the point here now to where we got to make sure that this is stuck really well to this everywhere. All right, that mater has a brand new skin on him. Let's see if this grease is hot enough. See that right there? It's just right. Drop him in there. While Shan's watching that and fry, I'm gonna put some more together. See, if Shan will get in here, that is browning around the edge of that pretty quick. It don't take these rascals long to cook. Looky there, right over the top it goes. It's probably about a minute to a minute and a half on each side if your oil is good and hot. Now you gotta do this in a cast iron skillet, folks. That's just the way the old classic way was. And I got me enough oil in there for about a shallow fry. You can see it comes up about three-fourths of the way on that mater. Now you need to get you one of these wire racks to set them on to let it cool. And if you got somebody helping you, you can have somebody doing this while you're frying. So just make sure you do this last step and pat them on there really well. We got us another in there going. from a trip to the garden with one of these to one of these. Now, to me, there ain't nothing better than going out in a garden and picking you something that you've grown and you've watched it mature and just get there and bloom and then put on a mater. Ooh, ain't nothing better. And when it's fresh, it's always so much better. Now you can see we fried them up golden brown. You want to let them cool before you take a bite of them. But if Shan will zoom in here, I want you to hear this here. That's a crust, folks. Like I told you in that New York steak deep frying rascal, it's like a turtle shell it is. Which one do you pick? Let me see. Any, meeny, miny, mo, catch a mater, here we go. I like this one right here. Mm. Folks, there's a little bit of that tart you get with that tomato. And then you get that crouton garlic and cheese mixed in there with it and that mesquite seasoning. Mm. 
This transforms me back to when I was a small child and my grandma and my mother would go out in the garden and we'd get her some of them green maters and I thought them, you know, they're picking them way too early they are, but they'd fry these things up on a Sunday, mm, put them out there with some good old classic fried chicken, wasn't nothing better. This has got a lot of memories in it. I hope you try this. It's so simple, so easy. Just remember one of the important things, slicing them thin, letting them sit there for a little. And if you like the tartness of that green tomato, hey, leave that sugar out, but try it this way one time. You will be surprised. In fact, you'll be surprised that I'm gonna take another bite. I wanna thank y'all for tuning in. I wanna thank my little sweet wife, Shannon, for all the hard work she does, the beagle for keeping the bears out of camp, but most of all, folks, I wanna thank the service men and women that are overseas and are still keeping our country safe. Independence is what this day is about. So, Fourth of July is coming up, folks, and I do salute that flag in our great country. It is a great thing. So, for all you soldiers over there and all you folks that keep commenting on our YouTube videos overseas, hey, we love you and thank you so much. God bless y'all. Hope to see you down the trail. Get a fried green tomato.